Hello, in this video I will be showing my setup for OpenGL development. This is going to be using MinGW, Eclipse, Glue, GLFW, GLM, and CMake. So I've already downloaded all these packages, but I've included the links down below for where they can be downloaded. And first one to install is MinGW, which is a compiler, so that gives you your C++. Now when you install this, it's initially I686, which I think is a little misleading. I always thought I686 was 64-bit, but there was a uh, thread on uh, Stack Exchange where they were talking about it and says that this is actually a 32-bit. So I set it to x86-64, and according to my research, this includes both 32- and 64-bit libraries rest of it I left the same. Now I've already installed it so I'm not going to go through that process again but I will say it's very important. I don't remember if this is taken care of by the install. It seems like I had to do this manually but one of the things is the system's path needs to be updated with the location of these binaries. So to do that right click my computer, go to properties, then you can come to advanced system settings environment variables and it's going to be down here I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this path up so you can see where I've added mine as I said I don't remember if I had to set this up manually or if it was done by the install but the way you'll know it is if you try to use the GCC commands I show here in a command prompt and they don't want to work and that is the purpose of it mostly so that you can use those so as you can see I have CMAP and I have the MinGW binary folder here so I can use those commands inside of inside the command prompt so I can run certain tools don't save alright so once you have your MinGW set up then you're going to include your Eclipse, and Eclipse is a wonderful little IDE. Um, I'm a huge fan of it. And the one of the nicest things about it is it's easily set up for multiple languages for different tasks. Um, I've used it for uh, for some web application development, and mostly I've d used it for just flat application development. So when you get your installer, install C++ developers, and the nice thing is, as you go, it'll find your MinGW install and set up appropriately. So there's not that much to do there. Just set your location, do your install. Then you need to install CMake. Now CMake is a tool designed to build and test package software. Some of these uh, actually only one of these down here actually requires CMake for your build. Again, very simple, just run the program, standard install, select location, etc. So, <clears throat> GLFW. Now this is uh, for simplifying the oper uh, operating system specific parts of working with OpenGL. So that's like creating windows, uh, mouse and keyboard inputs, some other things. I uh, believe it even has joystick support. So, and because it also cross compiles, to my understanding, it's supposed to work with Linux and all. And I have already installed it, but I'm going to get rid of it so I can actually show it being installed. Oops, I actually have a folder open there, don't I? So this one, there is some documentation on creating it and installing it. I, uh, it was not very straightforward. It was kind of hard to understand. Could be the operator in that case, but there was actually a YouTube video made by Discrete Mathematics. I also linked to that in the description and it was very helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that again. 
So now that you have your folder in place, you open up CMake and you just select the source code as the root folder. Now there is a source folder, but you need to set this as your root folder. Very important. This was very confusing to me. You see the CMake list.txt. This is what CMake uses to do its build. And lo and behold, there is also one in the source folder. But that one we don't want. We want this one. Then you select your build, and you can have this um, actually inst install in the root. And the, dis the documentation actually described that as an entry build. They indicated there were some differences. I didn't quite understand what they were. I got the impression I wasn't interested in what they were, but I highly recommend you read the documentation. So I'm going to go ahead. These are both set. Come down here, click Configure. Yes, we're going to build that folder. Use MinGW that we installed earlier, and it's going to do its thing. Now what it's building here is actually the install, so it's not building the actual libraries yet. That was part of what was so confusing. I was looking for push one button and everything be installed. Not the way it works. Now you hit configure twice and you will get rid of that red because that red's a little scary. Now very important we build the shared libs. What this is going to do is this is going to build the DLL and the DLL archive file. So the there is a there's a statically created file a uh, library. But I found trouble when I tried to link to that uh, the static linked file in my uh, project. It couldn't find a whole bunch of Windows methods that were included in the GDI. I believe what's happening is this one connects to the DLL and then the DLL is expected to go find the GDI DLL. That's all I could think of. Seems to work. Select that. So you click generate and that's it. We have no errors. We're good. And we can see it actually created our build file with a make file down here. So open up a command window and go to our glfw root oops and then go to the build folder and then from here we're going to run make and I'll be honest I can never fully remember what the name of the file is here I'm used to just typing make when I do do my Linux thing so I'm going to copy and paste it from over here. No, uh, no parameters are necessary and it starts doing its build. And it also builds a whole bunch of really interesting projects that demonstrate GLFW, although to me it's more demonstrating uh, OpenGL some of these, but I recommend looking through them. They are pretty neat. Anyway, while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and copy glue over. and come back over <coughs> while we're waiting on this one to finish up let that be going Okay, and now that that's completed, we can go into the build source, and we can see our archive and our DLL was created. And I personally like to move them into a lib folder. Just make it seems more in keeping with my developer aesthetic. So now these can be linked to an OpenGL project and made use of. All right. And next we're going to do glue. Now glue does not use CMake. It's actually got a make file. But the problem is most of the automation provided with glue is OS specific. So every time I tried to create the 
libraries for this one since I guess I'm on Windows it decided to do everything with Visual Studio solutions which as I said I do not want to use Visual Studios so after much searching I came across a, a blog it's Bruce Outdoors WordPress.com and the gentleman there gave a wonderful little tutorial um, now let me I've actually put it into a batch file but I'm actually going to run the commands in uh, one at a time so we can see them work alright so from the root folder we're going to be running these direct GCC commands now note I'm going to include these in the description below but if you go to the blog where he's got these listed I believe the blog was from like 2014 or 2015 and it was missing this tag right here and if you are missing this what's going to happen is it's going to say there's a conflict uh, conflicting uh, function I can't remember which one it was but it was a standard I believe it was a standard DLL function very frustrating uh, there's a gentleman who actually made a comment uh, named Lucas and after put that in there it all worked so all good I believe we already have a library folder Oop, crumbs yeah we already have the library folder so that one's not necessary so then we could just call these individually and build the glue libraries Oops. and some of these do span multiple lines be warned if you do it this way we are finished so now if we go into the library folder you can see we now have the archive files and the DLLs that go with they're now these are ready also to be linked to in our project and create some OpenGL code now the last one on here GLM is the OpenGL mathematics library and that one is not a library per se. I mean it's not something you have to link to. It's actually a series of pre-built headers and I believe yeah it's the same thing if you open up the zip there's just a folder that you drop into wherever you like to keep your libraries but you can see if we go you include the GLM folder you have a whole bunch of custom types that are very useful matrix 2233 so you can do matrix math real easily there's some trigonometric functions in here vector functions just very very useful you can get by without it but I do not recommend it because it is just it simplifies so much of the math that is um, really essential for good 3d programming anyway so now we have our development your our development IDE our compiler and our OpenGL libraries. Now I have actually created a program with this so I know this works. I'll be honest this is like the fourth time I've created this video because past couple of times when I actually tried to implement the code I found little issues in the installation so hopefully I don't have to make a fifth one on this. Uh, any questions or comments or corrections towards me I appreciate it. You all have a good evening.